welcome everyone. So welcome to the uh, Moon Foundations AGM. Uh, I promise you, it won't be as boring as some AGMs I've been to in the past. We have sweets, it'll be excellent. Well, we're not going to throw sweets anymore on advice from my lawyer. Uh, so, uh, who here doesn't know what the foundation is and what we do? So, excellent. You all award yourself a point to Gryffindor or whatever we're doing. Um, so the Gnome Foundation was set up as a uh, kind of a, a legal framework, is the boring uh, way of putting it, so around the um, project, but also there to help define what the project is, to help with releases, to hold trademarks, and to kind of help guide and support the Gnome project. Its main aim is to make sure that the project itself is successful. Now, as part of that, we have a load of GNOME Foundation members, and I hope every contributor is a member of the Foundation, because this is your way of saying how GNOME and the Foundation runs. So, just to have a quick brief overview of sort of the purpose of the meeting and, and what we're doing. Um, part of it, we're going to be presenting things from various teams, quick bit of financial overview as to where, oh, Welcome, excellent. So, uh, we're going to have a look at the board of directors. We have just had a um, election as well, so there's been a slight change in the board. And I'll introduce the officers. Um, then Nuritzi can take over then, and we'll have an update from the foundation and some reports from finances and the treasurers and the committees. Um, we're also going to be awarding the annual Gnome Pants Award, which was a a new thing that came to me from coming to the foundation. I hadn't heard of this before, but apparently we give away pants. So then we have a group photo, and then yours is the chance to grill everyone from our wonderful board. Um, so we've had a... Do you want to move on yet? Board directors, 2017-18. So... Um, as I mentioned, we had a new board, um, and we elected from within the board um, its officers. So again, we have Nuritzi. Wave, stand up and wave. Hello. Nuritzi is our president. Once again, Alan here is our vice president. Carlos, who's here, has taken on the wonderful world of sorting out our money. Uh, Alexandru is our lovely secretary. Cosimo is our Vice Secretary. And then we also have Zishan, who is here. And unfortunately, Meg can't be here today, but she is also carrying on and serving on the board. So, yes, thank you. Um, additionally, we've had a couple of people who've uh, left the board, so I'd just like to give my thanks to them. One of those is Sean, who's served as our temporary treasurer for a year, um, and he has very graciously as agreed to stay on as assistant treasurer uh, for you. So, so he hasn't quite escaped so far. Um, also like the opportunity to thank um, Ekaterina for serving as our wonderful treasurer for the last I'm getting looks. Kat. I'd like to thank Kat for serving as our treasurer for a wonderful year the last year. So yes, and so um, Sean and Jim, um, thanks for their service. They've been really, really helpful, um, especially as I've uh, come in as the new ED. So with that, I think I'll hand over to the board and um, let them give some reports. Thank you. All right, so we're going to have a lot of other updates on what's actually been happening within the GNOME Foundation, within the GNOME Project, as this AGM continues. Um, the very first thing that we wanted to showcase is just what we have been up to as the board, what has been going on 
within the foundation. Again, there's uh, been some feedback letting us know that not everything that we do is transparent. We're working on making that uh, just more transparent and hopefully it will excite some of you to be uh, running for the board next year. I know that some of this looks a little bit drab, but it really is cool and really needed. So yeah, bear with us. Um, so the very first thing we did was hire a new executive director. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know about it, it was, uh, it was a long process. <laughs> Karen's laughing as part of the ED hiring committee. Um, one of the things that we had to do this year was to hire somebody who was based in the UK, which we've never done before. We've had contracts, but not full-time employees. And so we had to figure out, you know, can we even do this? Do we need to incorporate there? Do we have to set up a new board to manage all of this? We decided not to do that and just hire him uh, based in the US. Um, we've retained a few things like signing power so that we don't have a permanent establishment here. If any of you are part of organizations who are thinking of hiring somebody in the UK in the future, um, let us know. We can maybe provide at least our contacts for who helped us draw up contracts and stuff. Um, but yeah, just let us know. We're now not really experts, but more experts than we were. Um, the other big thing that Neil especially is working on is rolling out, it's not civic CRM, I guess it's civi CRM. Um, and this is to help us with fundraising. It's something that we want to focus a lot more on in the future. We promise not to be like the super naggy, like give us money at every moment, pass around basket, <laughs> like at this thing. But um, we do want to, you know, increase our level of, fun, of fundraising. And we're trying to work also with uh, like Richard Hughes and the, um, for GNOME software to make it easier for people to donate to our applications, things like that. And so this infrastructure will really enable that in the near future. We decided that we wanted to take a really firm stance on um, just our principles if any of you attended Alan's talk, this is something that we really care about, freedom, um, openness, everybody being able to contribute to our project. And so we um, decided to put up a statement about the US immigration ban. Um, I know that you know there's always gonna be feedback on <coughs> political stances that we take, um, but this is something that we believe in. And then we are working on tightening up our trademark licensing. As uh, some people mentioned, we had that experience with Groupon, you know, a couple of years back. And we really want to make it so that um, we just track our licenses better and actually give out licenses. You'll see a lot more on um, branding guidelines and just like trademark policies, all this kind of stuff in the next year. Um, another thing we are working on is flat hub support. Um, and that will be something that will continue again in the future. And then budget and accounting improvements. We're trying to make it easier for teams to access budgets um, to really empower local teams and to just be more transparent around how we're actually using GNOME Foundation funds. All right? And then I didn't pick this title. I think it's still other important stuff, maybe not boring, um, but it's just kind of the essentials. We are hosting uh, GNOME Asia again, and a team member will be talking about that a little bit later on. Um, Guadec 2018 is confirmed and we'll let you guys know at the closing ceremony tomorrow, so don't miss that. And then Lost Gnome is being talked about. Um, we're pretty sure it's going to be in San Francisco in November, uh, but we'll release more details after that. And uh, it is centered on Flatpak, Flathub stuff, so anyone interested should go to San Francisco. Um, I already talked about the financial support. 
The sysadmin support is just basically renewing a contract with a company that helps us um, with uh, you know, our hardware so that it offloads it from our internal team. And lastly, just we had another successful board of directors elections and we'll continue to, uh, again, work on transparency and build up excitement so that all of you will be running eventually. All right, Sean is up for the treasurer's report. The best. <laughs> oh, right. right on. So um, those of you who have been around for a while might remember that I was treasurer, and then I wasn't, and then I was again, <laughs> and now I'm not, but somehow I'm still giving this report. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, uh, I, very boring number stuff. We have uh, current, as of when you know, we pulled some numbers, uh, 605,000, but we act as a fiscal sponsor for a couple of projects, uh, GIMP, PTV, a couple others. So um, their money is not our money. We just kind of hold it. So really, we got about 526, uh, that is actual uh, you know, money. Um, and I'm going to talk about how we've, uh, where that money's come from and where that money's gone. And uh, first I want to tell you about 2016. Now our fiscal year runs from October through the end of September. Uh, so it's kind of awkward here, I'm telling you about fiscal year 2016, which happened quite a long time ago, but it is the most recently completed fiscal year. I'll also give you our year to dates uh, on this year. Um, we had a surplus in 2016. Um, the source of that money, not a big surprise, uh, a, a large portion of it came from the advisory board, a large portion of it came from conference sponsorships uh, with donations coming in at a, a good healthy amount um, for that year, uh, and the internships is the money we get from Google for uh, Summer of Code students. Where did we spend it? Employees, uh, and then kind of spread things across uh, conference spending and event spending. So in 2017, uh, again, now 2017 is not over yet. We have like two and a half, two months and three days or something of 2017 left in our fiscal year. Um, but we're close. So uh, we are running a surplus so far for this year. Um, advisory board is, is considerably higher this year. Uh, and I'm going to show a, a four-year comparison. We'll see that better. Um, and our conference revenue, our conference sponsorship is higher this year. So that's, uh, we've done very well so far this year. Um, and our expenses, well, we've spent more on employees because um, we have another one. And uh, everything else is pretty solid. So this is where it gets a little interesting. This is our four year income. Now the, the top thing on the first two things, that's OPW, which we ran and then we split off to conservancy. So. I put it on the top so you can kind of ignore it. It brought in money, it spent money, big deal. Um, but I think the things to notice here is the blue marks, the, no, all right. Uh, the donations, um, 2015 is very much an outlier. That was the Groupon year, so a lot of donations there. But what you see is that we've had a steady decrease, except for 2015, in our donations. Um, and we're actually very low this year. It's at about $17,000. Uh, part of that is that we haven't had targeted fundraising campaigns. We've done those in the past. We know they're successful when we do them. And part of it is just we haven't had um, an employee going after that. You know, when, when, when we had Karen with us, she uh, did a lot to help with the individual donations. And without an ED, um, it's dwindled. So, but now we have Neil. Um, and... <laughs> And you can also see the red over the last three years, uh, that's the advisory board, the very bottom bar on that, has, has steadily gone down, slowly but steadily gone down over 14, 15, 16. Uh, and yet here we are in 2017 not being over yet, and it is higher than our 2014 numbers. Um, and that's in part due to uh, we have two new advisory board members. Has anyone, is anyone else doing the introduction of the new advisory board members? We have two new advisory board members, so I want to thank and welcome uh, Endless and Private Internet Access for joining the uh, advisory board.
or for your expenses. Again, you can kind of ignore the OPW at the top. Um, it's been fairly steady. You can see employees were more when we had two employees and then they're less and now it's gonna be more again. Um, but everything on there is fairly steady. Uh, the red blob you see in 2014 was due to writing off uh, unpaid invoices. It's boring accounting stuff. So, um, uh, but it, it, things are relatively stable. Um, conference spending is actually more stable than it appears. Sometimes like things get posted in a different fiscal year. Um, but it, it spending is uh, pretty stable over four years. So, oh, did I lose my slides? Oh, man. I was going to give you, um, maybe they will. <laughs> I was going to present a challenge with some bar charts of um, income and expenses. Um, but I do want to, I, I'll just, since I don't have the bar charts, I won't go through all of it. That's your, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have, um, you know, our expenses are going to be higher in 2018 um, because we do now have two employees. Um, and, you know, they'll be higher even than what we post for 17 because Neil wasn't with us for this entire fiscal year. So next year they will be higher. Um, and we need to increase our revenue uh, accordingly. Um, and we see an increase in the advisory board income, which is good and that will help us. Um, but I would like to see uh, an increase in individual donations. And um, the numbers I put in were, were hoping to get uh, 40,000, I think is what I put, for individual donations. I don't know where my thing went. Yeah, so 40,000 for individual donations is the challenge I'm putting out as your non-treasurer. Uh, and I think we can do that because I've seen talks about uh, different ways of bringing in donations. I think that's realistic um, and it's a number that we've, we've exceeded in the past. Whoa. Yeah, it is. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, that's the 17, so that's, that's what it was. It doesn't matter. $40,000 in donations I think is completely achievable. Um, and by the way, if everyone in this room goes and donates $60 right now, we'll be back up to our previous fiscal year uh, levels of donations. So. <laughs> um, and the only thing I wanted to say, um, donations, conferences, advisory boards, our spending on Hackfests is way down. You guys like are not having Hackfests. We like having Hackfests. Uh, they're a wonderful way to bring the community together. They're a wonderful way to get work done. And when we talk to our advisory board, they've consistently told us that, they, that for them, that's a high value use of our funds. So. Um, if you're thinking of having a hack fest, don't be afraid to come ask for money. That's, we like really want to fund some hack fest. We have a budget for it. Uh, and so far it's gone uh, very unused for this year. So more hack fests. That's it for me. Okay, um, so before I forget, I wanted to make a quick uh, change to the schedule. The pants are supposed to be presented at the end of the Q&A, not before, so we want you to come back <laughs> is basically what that is for. All right, so I wanted to award, whoops, no, wait, are you sure? Okay, all right. Don't want you to spoil <laughs> what's happening in the future. Okay, so points. Who can tell me one uh, of our committees? What is one of our committees? Not people on the board. Okay. <laughs> Bastion. The travel committee. Fantastic. Okay, what house are you? Gickle. Okay, you're noting that down. Woo! Dean Green. All right, any others that we have three? Uh, so I'm looking for kind of newcomers. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, you. 
Yep, Executive Director Hiring Committee. All right, and we have one more. All right, membership. we're gonna go up there. What? Membership. Membership, fantastic. Okay, what, what are your houses? Uh, turquoise. Turquoise, okay, turquoise. <laughs> and? Gigger. What? Gaggle? Yeah. Okay, and Gaggle. Okay, fantastic. All right, so you got them all. Um, the first one is uh, the ED Hiring Committee. Again, mentioned that it took us a while to find uh, you know, the right executive director and we, are, we had amazing candidates brought to us by the ED Hiring Committee. Um, these folks spent many hours uh, and gave us incredibly like, talented candidates. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who is on that uh, committee and round of applause. All right, the next one is the travel committee and they are responsible for helping get a lot of people to Guadec and all the other events that we uh, have. And so I think, what? Oh, stand up, sorry, oops. <laughs> travel committee, stand up. Okay, fantastic. And for those of you who don't know, so the committees are appointed by the board. The way to join them is we have to vote on your being part of this. So if at any point you guys are interested in you know, being part of a committee or something like that, either let us know, the board, or talk to commi the committees themselves just to know more about what they do. Um, all right, and then the last one that we mentioned is the memberships committee. So if you're part of that, stand up. I don't know if we have anybody in the room. Awesome, okay. And they again help us with both the board of directors uh, elections and also just getting new foundation members, which hopefully a lot of you will become. Um, so remember to send in your applications and they'll be processed by these beautiful people. And now, do we have any presentations? Okay, great. <laughs> so let's do the travel committee one first. Okay, so I haven't got slides because the slide deck was huge and apparently inserting anything into it made <laughs> other things vanish and whatnot. Anyway, uh, so who are the travel committee? So it's me, Max, and Dave. Um, all three of us are actually here at Guadec. And um, what we do is the board gives us a budget twice a year. Each time it's about $20,000 at the moment. And we assign that budget, uh, budget to Hackfests and to non-GNOME conferences, as well as small GNOME conferences like Last GNOME. And that enables people to actually attend those. Um, the other thing we do is we handle the travel budget for Guadec and for GNOME Asia, um, which is actually the bigger part of our job. Uh, so I'm just going to go over uh, the last three years and quickly tell you how many events we helped people attend. And if you have any questions, you can always come and find us afterwards. Uh, so in 2014 to 2015 financial year, so we work on the same financial year as the foundation, uh, we had five events um, of the Hackfest and Small Conference variety, Guadec and Gnomation. And for the Hackfests and small conferences, we sent, uh, we had 14 requests from 11 people, and we managed to spend eight and a half thousand dollars, which averages out to about 750 per person. Uh, the next year, we so in 2015, 2016, we had eight events, uh, for which we had 28 requests from 23 people, and this is really good. So this is excluding Guadec. Um, and we spent $12,000, which is about five fifty dollars per person. Unfortunately, this year we haven't had many requests, so you guys need to organize more Hackfests. We only had three Hackfests this year. That's compared to eight last year. I'm hoping we're going to get more requests this year, because otherwise we'll be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> but we had six requests from six people, and we spent about two and a half thousand dollars, and that's again about 550 per person. Um, so, I mentioned we also uh, handle the travel budget for Guadec and Gnomasia. 
uh, for those, we generally spend around 26 to 30 thousand dollars and bring 40 to 50 people to Guadec, 15 to 25 people to Gnome Asia. So you see, those are much higher numbers than for Hackfests. So yeah, you guys have to go help us catch up on the Hackfests here. Um, yeah, so each Hackfest gets about one to three percent of our annual spending. Guadec gets about 65 percent. Gnome Asia, 10 to 20 percent. Um, so this year we had, uh, I mentioned three Hackfests, Core Apps Hackfest. Um, thank you, Alan, for helping with the organization of that. Uh, we represented free software at an Indian government conference. That was really good because that's outreach where we actually promote free software use in government. So it doesn't only help GNOME, it helps all the other free software projects as well. And we also had the Rust Hackfest. And we've only spent $2,000 of our 40,000 annual budget on Hackfest. So again, people, come on, send in your requests. And if you want to be good to us, plan your hackfest at least two months in advance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it from me. Um, over back to Nirutsi. Okay, do any other committees want to make presentations? Toby? Fantastic. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Toby. I'm here on the behalf of the Membership and Elections Committee. We are processing GNOME Foundation membership requests, uh, and the other thing that we do is uh, handle the annual elections, or, well, any other elections if there were any. And um, I'm mainly here so that you know my face and uh, that you are able to approach me, you know, so that I can happily explain you all the processes and all, which I won't do now because it's very boring. My presentation here is also very boring because I only brought numbers, and uh, I didn't even bother to put them up on slides because it's, uh, I mean, Boring enough already. So, um, well, let me quickly uh, mention uh, the relevant numbers uh, regarding our foundation, which is the number of members. We've had, in 2015, so this is the mental process now, the mental transfer, sort of, uh, you have to now uh, go back in time two years, right? 2015, we had 270-ish uh, members, voting members. One year after, we had 250-ish members. That was 2016. 2017, which is this year, we had 220-ish members. So now you can do the math, and you will notice that it's a decline in, in numbers of members. But, worry not, this figure is backed up by a concept which we've sort of created uh, and coined as emeritus members. We can discuss the political impact of this uh, later, not here on stage, but uh, we have 50 of those emeritus members, which, if you now do the math, 220 plus 50 makes 270 again, which is roughly the same number that we had in like 2015. So, all in all, uh, all is good. We are, I mean, nothing really happens in terms of, you know, membership numbers. Everything is like the way it used to be. So, it's all fine. Thanks. <laughs> All right, and among other benefits of becoming a GNOME Foundation member, you do get to access more travel funds, and also you get a NextCloud account, which, does anyone know what NextCloud is? <laughs> okay, do any of you use it? Okay, yeah, it's great. It's a free and open source uh, place where you can, web hosting, yes, platform. Um, more on that later. All right, so next up, we're going to do team reports so that it's not just one person speaking. And the first team to give their presentation is the translation team, Alexander. Cheers. So uh, since last Guadec, we had two releases. The first one is 3.22, for which we had 39 supported languages, which is one less than the previous release. Um, in two more details, we... No, sorry, it was one more. So we lost Marathi, but we gained two languages, which are British English and Occitan. And um, I want to give applause to uh, the British English team. <laughs> but actually, I claim the credit for that because I was the one calling them out last year. Uh, 
Uh, for the 24 release, we had the same languages which were supported. And by the way, supported means that the number of translated strings in the GNOME UI is over 80%. We have a lot of uh, translation teams which are between 70 and 80%, so not much would be required for them to get supported status. So if you uh, speak a language that is not English, I invite you to go to the Damlice website and to check if your language is supported. And even if it's not, even if it's already supported, contribute to the translation. Um, during the 24 cycle, we also got uh, one of our translators, which is um, uh, Piotr Drag, who worked on improving the Unicode support for strings in the UI. So now we have beautiful, if you have a nice font, uh, emojis. So thanks to uh, Piot. <laughs> and we also had an event in uh, Turkey um, where there was a workshop for newcomers where they learned how to translate. So thanks to the organizers too. And that's it for me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot about it. So yeah, um, uh, the challenge we are facing is uh, currently the support for Mason in Damlice. So if anyone knows about Python and Mason and wants to help us support uh, Mason, which is getting support in many modules now, uh, please come to us and help us. And that's it for me. Thanks. Okay, so uh, from now on, people can just sort of hand it over to the next person, so I don't have to come here. Y'all have done. Um, but the other thing, just for newcomers, take just pay attention to who's presenting because they can help you uh, get onboarded to those teams if you're interested in any of the stuff that uh, those teams are doing. So next up, documentation team, and both. Okay, that's here we go, Peter. Header. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, so there, first of all, there's a change in leadership of the documentation team. I would like to say thank you to Kat for all her hard work as uh, docs lead in the past many, I mean, in the previous years. She's stepping down, and uh, I'm kind of uh, uh <laughs> taking over. So, thank you. Uh, as for what the documentation team uh, uh, did in the past few months or in the past year, uh, we don't have that many important well, updates uh, on this part, but let's say that uh, we are seeing uh, patches being sent to us to update GNOME help and application help, either from core members of the team or translators who translate our content, find issues or developers who care about documentation which is great so uh so updates are being done to, uh, throughout the doc suite uh there is also work being done on the technical parts of the documentation uh, components so sean has worked on htm html5 uh, working uh, uh, support in yelp xsl so that's now in master i believe so you can check it out uh, in the Yelp XSL module. Uh, translators can now translate system administrator's guide, which is available on Damlice for translations. Uh, as for challenges, we are fortunately seeing a decreasing number of contributors and contributions to GNOME uh, from core members as well as from other people in the community. Uh, compared to previous years, so uh, this is something that we will need to work on to attract new people, get them on board. So that's actually something we would like to we would like to address uh, Monday and Tuesday. We are organizing a newcomers workshop. So for those of you who uh, find documentation work to be exciting. 
uh, you're very much welcome to join us or even if you like just want to talk to us like you know about the docs challenges and documentation work in general uh, be sure to to come uh, to the unconference venue Monday and Tuesday uh, this uh, session is open open to to translators so if you are a translator uh, you can also join us there will be translation and documentation uh, onboarding uh, work being done like so it's for both uh, let's say parts of the project uh, as for plans uh, <coughs> uh, there is an interest in uh, uh, downstream distributors in uh, giving more time to translators to translate the, the content in core documentation components mostly the non user docs so for this upcoming stabilities we will do like a pilot uh, release program we will be uh, doing string phrases for uh, two weeks for translators to be able to finish their translation work and then we will do a minor bug fix release shipping those translators and then we will open uh, the content for updates again and then if there is enough interest we will repeat this string freeze period for documentation so we'll see how that will go but uh, but this is to others one of the problems with people uh, with translators not having enough time uh, you know to, to uh, finish the translation work because we've been constantly changing the strings during the development cycle which never ended actually yeah so that's that's about it so thank you hi um i'll be presenting the ses admin team update uh we have a few accomplishments uh out of all of these um I haven't done any. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do still have permissions. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, it should have been removed or something. Um, but it's nice to give an update uh, on what other people did. Um, <laughs> Andrea couldn't make it to Guadec. Uh, Patrick should be somewhere here. Well, I don't see him. Uh, they actually do most of the, uh, the work. Uh, so just to go through a few things, we searched uh, the from bind to unbound just because Andrea liked it more. Um, there's a new service, it's ODRS. Anyone have any idea what it does? <laughs> oh, wow, okay, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so basically uh, in GNOME software, you can hit like the star thing and give a comment. That's ODRS, that makes it possible. Uh, according to Patrick, it has a few memory leaks and a few, it's like gigabytes. <laughs> um, it would be nice if it was a little bit more stable. Precious a lot, but okay. Um, other stuff, uh, these SSL certificates, you had Startcom. Um, they were compromised quite a bit, uh, so Let's Encrypt is uh, a lot better. We also have, uh, we also use Gandhi. That's just because of the wildcard su uh, support that you have, uh, not in Let's Encrypt, but you do have it in Gandhi. So eventually, I think uh, Jan 2018, we'll probably only use Let's Encrypt. And we, I mean Gnome and Patrick and Andrea. Um, some hosts were removed. You have a new mailman. So. Uh, previously, some of the mails, due to spam checking and so on, they uh, they were going to the spam folder because of all kinds of technical reasons. Won't go into it. The new mailman makes it sure that it does the right thing. So if you use, for instance, uh, Gmail and so on, you still see the mails from everyone, and some aren't just going to your spam folder. Um, new Puppet Master. Uh, the service uh, warranty renewers, thanks to the GNOME Foundation. Basically, in case something breaks down, 
and could be like a hard drive or anything like that. Um, we need that fixed ASAP because if some, something breaks down, you need uh, you need a replacement before, for instance, the next hard drive with, uh, breaks down and so on. Uh, that only works nicely if you have the support contract. So that was renewed. Um, just to point out, like we we're volunteers and so on. The benefit of running RHEL, we still have one host running RHEL 5, so if someone is still like backporting security fixes to that <coughs> thing, we use it. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, it doesn't do that much actually, I, I checked. It's the, uh, it, it's, a, it's a VM host, uh, syslog logs get sent to that host and something other that wasn't too important. But okay. Um, new initiatives, continu uh, continuous integration with Jenkins. Um, GitLab, talked about enough. So, uh, own cloud to next cloud. From what I understood, it's just uh, uh, instead of calling it own cloud 2.0 or something like this, they made some incompatible changes, and that's why they call it next cloud. Mm -hmm. So. It was an idea, but I prefer just going from two to three to four and so on. It was a bit easier. Uh, a new uh, box. I think it's probably used for the continuous integration. Uh, I'll skip over some other stuff. Don't find it interesting. Um, backup facility. So previously, the backups, we did have them. Uh, Owen Taylor arranged that. Um, but that was, I think it was just one person. Uh, and now, we uh, have the backups uh, with the uh, Fedora infrastructure team. Uh, I think they employ a few uh, full-time sysadmins, uh, including a bunch of volunteers. That's way better than relying on one person for our backups. Um, yeah, Puppet, that's basically how to configure the servers and so on. And yeah, for the last four years, uh, almost no uh, outages or anything like that. Except for, from what I heard, is that the entire like uh, uh, NOC, so where the servers are hosted, were was unavailable. But the servers were running; you just couldn't reach them. <laughs> <laughs> That's still good. <laughs> um, challenges, yeah. Um, GitLab could be uh, interesting. So making sure that it's a uh, success. Uh, the last uh, RHEL 5 host uh, to de decommission that. It should be okay because it's not running anything too important. And trying to meet, bring new members to the team. Because uh, from what I understood, we're just three people with one person doing nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah, and we had some apprentices, but Due to security, they first get like only that can send patches, and apparently most sysadmins just want to have root to every damn server they can have access to, and we don't hand them out immediately. And then they're like, "Yeah, come on, I'll go somewhere else." That's a bit unfortunate. Um, yeah, as said, so if you're interested in doing sysadmin without having actual root on anything, um, come talk to me. I can tell you that all the stuff you could do. Uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks to Andrea, Patrick, for actually doing something. Uh, I'll try to do something in the future again. <laughs> One thing is that yesterday was National Sys Admin Day. So if you haven't already, buy them a beer or give them a hug, even if it doesn't do it. Okay, uh, my name's Alan. I'm going to do the design team updates. Um, I know this can go on quite a long time, so I'll try to be quick. Um, who are we? Well, I don't think we're, I don't know. We call ourselves the design team, but you know, like there's a lot of people working on design in different areas of the project. These, to me, are some of the, the key names, but there's, there are others. Um, 
I think that the core of the team on the UX side uh, continues to be myself and Jakob. Hi, Jakob. <laughs> um, but we also have lots of help. Um, Andreas has been doing work on maps still. Um, Lapo continues to help out with the theme and icons when he surfaces periodically. Uh, we've had help from another volunteer from Sam with some of the icon work that we've been doing, which has been great. Um, Bastian's been doing work on merchandise <laughs> and Polari and that kind of thing. Jeff was helping out with the annual report. Is Jeff here? <coughs> Boo, Jeff's not here. <laughs> uh, we're really excited to have a couple of new contributors from Endless, Kate and Robin here. Yay, we've got Kate. <laughs> really happy to have you on board. And finally, uh, Nikolaus has been working on Cantorel and has been doing some really exciting work there around different weights, which Nate is looking up, worried about. But it's, it's very cool. Um, what have we been doing? This is mostly uh, kind of uh, UX stuff for the last release and the coming release. Um, new features like the nightlight. Um, quite a bit of work around settings still. Uh, the new recipes app has been a lot of work. Software continues to be the application that just keeps giving in terms of design work. You know, you think this will be the time that it's done, but it is never done. Um, Bastion with Polari. Higher resolution icons, because displays keep getting denser, so everything needs to keep getting bigger. Um, things that we've got coming up in 326. Uh, really big piece of work was the, the, the builder stuff that uh, Christian's been doing a great job blogging about. Um, that was a you know, serious amount of work on the design side. Um, lots of stuff going around settings still. Will we get the new setting shell this release? We're hopeful. Um, we're taking another look at the activities overview and the shell and trying to make some improvements there. Like we don't want to just kind of rest on our laurels with that. So expect some improvements. They might be small. Well, they are. There are small changes there. There are potentially bigger ones on the way, which we are still figuring out. Um, photos, um, really keen to get that whole story filled out. So I've been working with Debashi on that. And more Polari stuff, because Sebastian works hard. Um, there's a kind of overlap between design and marketing and engagement and so some of this stuff doesn't kind of get discussed too much say on the design channel but there's overlap in who does what so um, we've had people doing the annual report, people designing t-shirts, stickers, banners, posters, all that kind of thing. Uh, we've done some work on a new set of brand guidelines, which I promise to get finished next over the next six months or so. <laughs> and um, we've had quite a lot of changes to the websites, which has been really amazing. And it's so sad that Tom isn't here this quarter, because I'm sure a lot of people would like to shake him by the hand. He's done amazing work. And I think one of the exciting things from our point of view is that a lot of that work was facilitated by having brand guidelines. So once you give people like a palette and a style that they can work from, then that enables them to go out and work independently. So Tom did all of that redesign work with very little like direct support. So that's a real success story. Um, bit of a kind of high level thing now, like. Um, you know, we've had GNOME 3 for quite a while, and it's quite stable, and it's really good. Uh, there's still always kind of missing pieces to fill in, like, you know, it will never be done. But uh, it's also worth thinking about uh, kind of um, what we're delivering to our users with, with each subsequent release. We want GNOME users to feel like they're on a continually improving platform. We want them to feel like it's an exciting platform to be using, that, that it's going to keep getting better, that they can feel like proud of what they're using. So um, one thing that we're really keen to do is 
try and make sure that every release we have strong user visible features that we can that we can point to and that we can you know put into our marketing and everyone can get really excited about um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be spending months and months and months of developer time on those features there's a lot of new features that are relatively easy to um, implement and one of the things that certainly I'm really keen to do is to try and kind of find those new capabilities, those really useful pieces of functionality that can be added relatively easily so that people are kind of really noticing the improvement with every release. And I think things like the Nightlike that we did last, last release was a great example of that. Uh, some of the changes that we're doing to search this time around. <coughs> And you know, we would love to hear your ideas for those kind of new features because it's not just up to the design team to, to come up with those. Like the nightlight was, was a suggestion that was brought to us and we thought it was a great idea and we ran with it. So if anyone has you know, new functionality, new things that people can look at and think, right, this is really helpful, this is something new. We'd really love to hear ideas for that. Um, other priorities, the core apps continue to be uh, both a priority and a challenge, I would say. Uh, and I'm particularly thinking about the multimedia stuff, uh, photos, videos, music. Um, there's a lot of work to be done there. There's kind of missing pieces of the experience that we would really like to see fleshed out. It's relatively hard to get traction in those areas, so we're always looking for help with that. Um, developer experience continues to be a major priority, like with uh, Flatpak and Builder. You know, we really want to invest time there. It's very time consuming. It's not easy design work, so that's definitely an area where we're looking for assistance. Christian codes faster than you can design, so this can be an issue. But, you know, we try and keep up the best we can. Um, Partner collaboration. Um, we've been spending quite a lot of time with our friends at Endless, which we're really excited about. We've been having regular calls. We really want to continue doing that. We really want to continue bringing new partners in, kind of engaging them as part of the design process. Uh, we're really thrilled to have um, people here from Canonical to talk about design stuff. This squad act, which is amazing, and I'm really hopeful that we're going to have kind of three or four sets of people from different companies sitting down to talk about some design issues in the next few days, which is like a really great thing. And um, yeah, the final point here, uh, challenges, scalability. Like, I think this is a kind of unique problem for design because on the one hand, you want to have a coherent vision, you want to have a strong sense of direction, but <coughs> You, we also need more people to, to come in. We need to grow the team. It's hard to keep up. So there's always a challenge there around uh, bringing new members in, how to bring them up to speed, how to encourage people but kind of stay true to the, to the course. And um, I'd be interested to talk with people about how we can improve in that area because I think it's important. Okay, that's design. Release team, Matthias. Yeah, so the release team is a small group of people. Um, it's myself, um, Michael Catanzaro up there, Andre Klapper, and Javier. You around? Javier? Well, that's us. Oh, that's good. Um, <laughs> our primary responsibility is to um, set the release schedule for every release. And then uh, come release day, we go around and uh, hound maintainers to give us tarballs, and uh, we make sure that everything builds and gets released on time. And um, yeah, so um, I didn't actually put that here, but uh, I guess the highlight is that we actually do produce two releases every year, and we successfully did that this year again. Uh, Time-based releases, as Jonathan mentioned earlier, is like uh, one of our defining features. So uh, that's our mission to make sure that happens. And, and other highlights are um, GNOME continues continues to be working pretty well most of the time. Um, it's of course largely um, thanks to our amazing build sheriff, Emanuele, who is not an official release team member, but he really should be considered um, as a release team member because um, what he's doing with continues really helps us because it makes sure that 
things actually build. Uh, another highlight is um, the transition to Meson as the uh, build system that uh, a couple of GNOME modules have started to do and um, that will hopefully help us um, make things uh, build faster and nicer in the future and um, so far it, it hasn't been too disruptive I would say. I mean there was a few uh, times where we got tarballs that did not actually build with our release JH build configuration because they were missing uh, Meson uh, build files but overall it has been uh, pretty okay and manageable and we hope it stays that way. Uh, another highlight is um, the GitLab transition that is uh, hopefully happening very soon. Uh, from the release team perspective, we really hope to uh, uh, get some better CI and um, testability out of that and um, that will be interesting to see come to fruition. There's also been uh, quite a bit of progress on building applications at Flatpak and there's the whole build stream effort going on. Um, that's um, exciting for us as a release team but uh, it's also I would say a challenge because um, we are a very small group and uh, it's Javier, Michael and me doing the releases. Uh, that, that runs largely on autopilot I would say. We know how to do it and um, it takes us a couple of days every time but um, it's not a, a big deal. But we don't really have the bandwidth to like engage and push forward on uh, figuring out how we want to use build stream and for that reason our release procedures are still tied to JH build and um, keep running that way so it would be really nice to have some fresh manpower and uh, see some people who might be interested in, in helping us figure out how we can use build stream uh, to make things better and if you're interested in that um, there's a build stream buff happening on Wednesday I believe I think the release team will be there and uh, it would be a, a really great opportunity to, to come and uh, discuss with us how we can make use of Bitstream. And yeah, another challenge is um, Flat Hub. It's of course very exciting, but I guess for, for us as the release team is we have to figure out how we want to make best use of it. And um, one thing that we're probably going to do fairly well is to um, switch the um, builds of uh, stable GNOME flat packs that we do for GNOME applications. We'll just move those over to Flat Hub, I think, because that's a uh, a good good place for them. We'll keep the, the nightly builds on the GNOME infrastructure and um, see how that goes. I think that's all I have. <coughs> Hello everyone. So we are a little tight on time, so I will be quite fast with it. But I want to put the spotlight to some people that usually do a lot of work, but they are not um, kind of known on, on GNOME. And here it is in the stars, you can see it. Um, I guess, work can I switch. So first, this is the top 15 back closers. I will spotlight the five uh, first. So Sebastian Drog is working for GStreamer. Uh, Michael Catazzaro is working for WebKit, GTK, and Tiffany and on the release team. Uh, Andre Claper is our back, back squad master. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait. Um, I want to spotlight him because he's a community member. He's not paid to do this work. Uh, Milan, who is working on evolution, and Bastian Nocera, who is working on everything and fixing everything. <laughs> So here, I want to highlight the two first, because both of them are community members. They are not paid to do this job. Uh, Mohamed has been working for only maybe eight months, and he already reported 408 <laughs> bucks. So he's like, <laughs> uh, he's amazing. And then we have Jeremy Vicia, which is working uh, for Ubuntu. Um, then part contributors, we have uh, the Varsity Rai, which uh, is working on normal like, uh, accounts, on non photos, and well, a non terminal is working on a lot of applications and on the stack. Uh, Philip Cimento, which is working on GGSS, GGS, yeah, and Adrian Plazas, which is working on non games and other parts, and he's also a community member. He's not paid to do the job, so it's quite amazing that he's on the third place. Adrian, where are you? Ah, here. <laughs> Then we have Florian, which is working on Nomsiel and Matter. And we have 
Bastien Osser again, which is working on everything and fixing everything. And I thought maybe you don't see like this, reviewing patches is really hard. It's sometimes even harder than doing the code yourself. So we have our top five here is Sebastian Droke again, which I'm not sure if he's human anymore because <laughs> 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 he's doing the most patches and the most, you know, like the most reviews. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so we have Bastian Nocera, which is working again on everything. The Russian <laughs> Rai, Cosimo, Seki, Seki, Seki. I always miss it. Uh, ah, he's here, yeah. And he's working well m many places. I don't know. And uh, and me, which is working on <laughs> Nautilus and UTK and Ocel. Uh Before we move, uh, I want to make a question that counts for the <laughs> for the houses. There was one person which was in every of those pages in the top five contributors. Who was it? Bastian. Bastian. So my personal thank you for your work. <laughs> and last thing is that as someone, some people already mentioned, we are trying to move to GitLab. And I hope that we'll bring um, some new people to the Bus was back squad uh, team. And if you have question, Eliran from GitLab is here. Eliran, wave. Is there on the end? <laughs> and that's it from me. Thank you. Sort of it from you because you and Bastian <laughs> are helping me with this one. All right, so the engagement team is comprised of many, many people. Just kidding, it's not really. But it's uh, at least <laughs> these two. And who else who has been part of the engagement team? Can you stand up really quickly just to, I see you, Neil. You're part of the engagement team too, Karen? Yes. All right, thank these people for their work. <laughs> So we're gonna, again, breeze through this, so I apologize if it's a little bit fast. Um, one of the main things that we've been working on this year has been laying the infrastructure so that we can then start to outreach more and support people um, in their outreach initiatives all around the <laughs> world. Um, and then also we've sort of expanded the definition from marketing to just general engagement because we believe that it's not only external engagement that matters, but internal engagement as well. So really helping to make sure that you guys all feel part of this community and that you feel welcome and uh, you know, that people thank you for, their wor for your work instead of just hearing all the you know, maybe negative comments or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, all things that we really care about. Um, all right, so Alan already mentioned this, so I won't go too much into this, but over the last year, Tom has really kicked ass on the website. You guys have probably seen the updates, um, but he's really unified the uh, website and the wiki pages to just give them a fresh look and to um, hopefully make it um, so that newcomers don't feel like they're back in the 90s when the project began. <laughs> um, and <laughs> And we'll continue to improve this. Some feedback that we've had in the past is when you go to our site, people don't exactly even know what GNOME is, especially if you're not a technical contributor already, um, or you know, just various things that we've heard as pieces of feedback. So we're going to try to keep improving that experience to help people find the information that they need, um, both to become a community member and to start contributing uh, to GNOME. So that sort of segues into the newcomers initiatives, which I'll let these two gentlemen, or I guess Bastion first. Uh, so uh, the newcomer initiative uh, consists of, well, all the teams that has been presented each have a guide for getting contributions. And then we have a lot of teams doing coding on different apps and that's where me and Carlos have come in and we have tried to work on the, the shared 
uh, guide for, for, for the coding part. That's been the main we focus on. Um, in, in this guide, we've uh, had a lot of new changes the past 12 months. Uh, among others, we went from having a GH-built-based guide, and now, uh, thanks to Flatpak and thanks to Builder, we can make the installation process a lot easier to get started contributing your first patch. Then we've had uh, fixed uh, communication uh, as well. So uh, we are now using uh, Matrix and, and Riot and giving a, a direct link to make it easy for newcomers to get immediately uh, in an online chat with the community. And finally, we would really like to collaborate together with the uh, individual teams to also help uh, on their guides um, so that we can uh, uh, use and share uh, knowledge uh, between your, uh, each other uh, for the teams that would like to, to do that. We have a picture here of the, the newcomer guide uh, front page uh, as it looks uh, now. So uh, the main change has been to do a lot of uh, work on the visual assets, make it a lot uh, less text heavy, simplify the process, make it very clear that there's just four steps to contribute your first patch to GNOME. Thank you. This is me, yeah. Um, so as you may know, we have some internships. One is Cool Summer of Code, and the other one is Orichi. For us, it's very important, this kind of internships, because they bring uh, new people all, all the time, and it's like three months that they are with us, with a mentor, learning all the experience. So it's like a really fast build up of experience for them. And so for Google Summer of, sorry, Orichi, we have six students. Um, they were focusing on what we are missing more, which is usab usability testing, design, and translation, I think. Yeah, localization. Uh, this is very important because for Google Summer of Code, there is a rule that they can only be coding. And we are actually missing the other part. So Orichi really helps on this. And for Google Summer of Code, we had 18 students, and one thing I like it about that is that we are focusing more on the projects they do, and right now we are focusing in core apps, so we had 12 students working on core apps. And another thing that I'm proud of is to be an umbrella project for other organizations, in this case Nextcloud. That happens when some other organizations don't, doesn't have the legal stuff or, you know, or the effort, the energy to, to make it into a sum of code. So we kind of take the projects and we put it inside our organization. And yeah, that's, that's it for internships. Okay, and then last but not least, uh, events that we've had. Again, I sort of mentioned that we're laying down the infrastructure to help increase these and people have been talking about oh we don't have hack fest things like that we want to encourage people we're going to start you know like actively <laughs> encouraging people to do that um, but let's say you're a local organizer and you you know are part of the GSOC or outreachy programs you go back to your university are pumped up about you know spreading the gnome word and then you're like I have no I'm not a designer I don't know how to make pamphlets to show people like where to how to become newcomers themselves or um, you know social media assets all these things like we need to start creating templates and helping to make it easier for people to um, you know create their own events and and do their own outreach um, but over the last uh, year these are some of the things we've done some more release parties and have tried to have like fifty dollar budget so that anybody can access that without having to go through like a big bureaucratic process for reimbursements, um, and that's worked pretty well. Um, we're trying to create swag centers so that we can send things like a few stickers to local teams so that they don't have to order you know, a bunch themselves and again, go through the reimbursement process. Um, and we've done, uh, a I guess the bug squash month that was really pioneered by Alexander. But uh, again, in this effort to try to get newcomers to the project and to help them get started through the bug squash team. 
um, and a lot of events thrown by Julita in Peru. She's one of our most active members in Latin America. Um, so huge thank you to her. And her <laughs> These I won't really talk much about, but we um, started a new conference, Las Gnome, thanks to Sri's wonderful uh, vision and really, you know, just him propelling it forward. Um, we're hopefully having that again this November, as I mentioned, in San Francisco, so stay tuned. Um, and then the summit in Montreal. You guys can read through this list. There were some events we attended. Um, the big thing about this one is that now we're trying to actively track which events we'd like to go to in the next year. So if any of you plan on going to events and want to, you know, like speak about GNOME or represent us at a booth or something, let us know. Um, but there's now a wiki page called the Targeted Events Wiki page uh, where you can also sign up and that way we can give you materials for the event that you're going to and it'll help us with the budget planning too, so let us know. Um, this is an example of a booth that we had at Scale 15X in Pasadena this year. You can see that it looks pretty, fantastic, and this is really the kind of thing that we wanna do, make GNOME really cool and you know look as beautiful and elegant and reliable as we're trying to you know do with the product itself, so again, um, Alan mentioned the brand guidelines. We're so happy to have those to put on these things. And then here are just some pictures, release parties all over the world. Cakes, fantastic if you want to do like a cake bake off during one of these release parties, please do post pictures. And then bug squash uh, month, we had um, some active groups in Lyon, San Francisco, Strasbourg, Alberg, London, and Lima. So thank you. Uh, challenges that I mentioned, global integration is a big one. Um, we have, you know, kind of groups all over the world, some more active than others, but like for example, Gnome Asia, like we'd love to do some more integration so that we can um, help support and uh, again, have like a branded experience all over the world too uh, with integration and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also part of this global integration bit is um, you know, what about people who speak other languages? How can we make it easier for them to get started and organize events and get, you know, become contributors to the project? Um, and then making sure that the information we provide is easy to find because who knew about the targeted events page before I mentioned it? One, two, three, yeah, like five people. So this is the thing like we need to get better at actually organizing this if you're passionate about organization let me know kindred spirit um okay and then social media and marketing the guadec team this year has done an incredible job with their twitter if you want to join us please do because we need you um and then non-technical onboarding and local outreach support this is something i'm particularly very uh passionate about so if you are not a programmer but want to get involved in GNOME, let me know. All right. And with that, I will let uh, Max talk about GNOME Asia this year. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. OK, so the GNOME Asia uh, 2017 is confirmed in the Chongqing. Okay. So for a start, I will review of, of our, our Ground Asia Summit. So we started in 2008 at Beijing, and the uh, first city in 2009 in uh, Vietnam. So uh, when I joined the, the journal is the 2010, we have a Coast Cup, a Southern Open Source Conference in Taiwan, and St. Bethan to in, uh, introduce some ground to. And so we have a, a ground users group Taiwan to create in 2010. In 2011, we go to in, we go to India. So I contribute to the ground nation team. And when 2012, we will go to Hong Kong. We sent uh, Alan and Yakub be our keynote. And you know that's the effection. So now in Hong Kong, they have their own open source conference in Taiwan. Oh, but sorry, in Hong Kong. Yeah. So in 2013. 
uh, we have a conference in Korea, St. Karen be our keynote and we, found, we find out some uh, ground foundation member back to Korea and in 2014 we back to Beijing. It's a very, very good start because we start to co-host with the Fedora. We co-host with the Fedora.com and 2015 we go to Indonesia. So have you know and to notice that in 2015, we even have a GNOME shoes, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> we have a GNOME manufacturer with, with the shoes. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, so in 2016, yeah, we are sent a uh, customer to our keynote, and we have an official certificate in university when they join the Ground Asia Committee. They have a school in the university. so. Back. <clears throat> so everyone know now is the Chinese for the ground. But do you know this year also the tens for the Ground Asia Summit? <laughs> so so same. So this year we are in Chongqing. Yeah, it's a city in the middle of China. It's a beautiful city and it's a 3D city. <laughs> <laughs> So what is the three state city means? That means the subway train may be across the, <laughs> the apartment and building. And if you like to adventure, you might be a skywalk between the mountains. <laughs> okay, so not to the only the, to the mountains, and you, you can take some uh, cable to the rivers. And so how do I participate with the uh, open, uh, <coughs> sorry, Grand Asia? <laughs> Okay, please submit your paper before this day night, okay? Okay, or directly go to the Chongqing to meet with us. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so we are way over time, but now it's photo time. So go out and we're doing it on the stairs, I believe, indoors. And then come back for the pants.